Hey everyone, Mark here from Benderite Games, and I'm here to demonstrate the wormhole demo that I've put together. First, let's go over some controls. You can press O to toggle showing what the controls are. The WASD keys are used for forwards, backwards, left and right motion. Q and E will rotate you around. And Shift and Control will move you up and down. If you want to stop, press space, and all of your motion will be halted. That gets really helpful as you start to learn how to navigate the odd contorted space uh, around the wormhole. Now I'm also going to change this uh, to be a black hole. And that'll we'll, we'll get to explaining the features of the wormhole once we understand the features of a black hole. Uh, to change the skyboxes, I use the left and right arrow keys for skybox number two and up and down arrow keys for skybox number one. We're currently on the number one side. We'll go over to the number two side of the wormhole in a little bit. So this is approximately what a black hole would look like mathematically. Uh, all of this simulation is done with ray tracing. It's all offloaded onto the graphics card, so if you don't have a graphics card, I don't recommend trying to run this. Your computer will just heat up like nothing else, and you'll probably not have a very good frame rate. But if you have a graphics card, you'll be able to try this on your own. So what you'll notice is around the central black hole area, that's the event horizon, is that black part in the center. Around that is this fairly distinct ring that's called the photon ring and that's where light starts to loop around one or multiple times uh, as light passes closer and closer to a black hole it starts to not only take an orbit like we would see with planets but it starts to spiral multiple times as it gets closer and closer to the event horizon so we're going to start to approach the event horizon here and that black part starts to get bigger and bigger that's the event horizon it's going to start to encapsulate more and more of us. And if you imagine falling into a black hole, this is approximately what it would look like. We just passed over inside the event horizon, and now we're looking out at space. Shrinking away, and that's the entire skybox visible all at once because of the way that light funnels in and spirals into the black hole. But you didn't click on this video to see what it looks like spiraling into a black hole. You want to know what it's like spiraling into a wormhole. So we're going to turn on the other skybox. Again, that's the left and right arrow keys. I'm going to put it to something relatively mundane. This is a nebula with a single sun in it. Now, if you notice, there, are mul there appear to be multiple images of the sun. What's happening is as the light from that sun spirals into the wormhole, it spirals and loops around. If you think about water falling into a drain, the longer you make that drain, the more opportunities that the water has to circle around the drain. So what we can do is increase the length of the drain. I'm pressing I right now, and that's increasing the length of the throat of the wormhole. And what that's causing is now, instead of seeing three copies of the sun on the other side, we're seeing uh, looks like seven copies because that light from that sun has now circled around the drain seven times. More accurately, it has circled around the throat of the wormhole seven times. One of the features that I've added that helps determine exactly when you pass into the wormhole, because right now we're in the photon ring, uh, at this point, but we're not quite inside of the event horizon of our side of the wormhole. So by hitting G, you can toggle what is, if you imagine, a sphere of grid, a spherical grid projected onto the spherical first side of the wormhole in red and the spherical second side of the wormhole in blue. And this is where understanding starts to get really tricky. Each side of a wormhole is mathematically equivalent to a black hole, where a black hole goes into a uh, condensed point, and if you share those points between two black holes connected through um, the four-dimensional space-time, that those inputs, where the black hole goes to, from each side ends up being the same point. That's where the throat gets created. It's not easy to describe in three dimensions, which is why I'm struggling with it. But this is at least a way to visualize it mathematically. As I pass these red lines, that means that I'm passing the event horizon of the first side of the wormhole. The blue 
is the other side of the wormhole. So now as I go through the throat, I'm passing into the other side of the wormhole. Uh, the reason that the grid lines stop is if we calculated the ray paths that photons would be taken uh, with perfect accuracy and just in, with, if we had infinite amount of time and infinite amount of processing power, as you get closer and closer to the connection point of each side of the wormhole, you start to approach an infinite number of images of each side that appear. In other words, light will just continue spiraling around almost indefinitely and our computers would crash. So there's a limitation on exactly how long you can make the uh, length of the wormhole. More accurately, there's a limitation of the number of times that light can circle around inside of the throat of the wormhole. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue out to the other side and get rid of the grid lines for the wormhole. And one thing I'll point out as I circle around is I'm orbiting around the, the wormhole, but there's always an image, and it's always a complete image from the other side. That's because of the way that light is contorted as it passes through a wormhole. One of the things that I was curious about is what if I aim and I'm inside of the wormhole now, I'll increase the length of the throat. What happens if I go straight now? Because I'm not aiming towards this side of the wormhole. I'm not aiming towards that side of the wormhole. I'm just aimed at the wall of the wormhole. And it looks like I'm inside of a tube. And normally when you think of being inside of a tube and you go straight, you would think that you would hit the wall. So think to yourself, what would, what should happen? What would you expect to happen? Do you expect to hit a wall? What wall is there to hit? And if there isn't a wall to hit, what would you expect to see? So now I'm going to aim towards the sun as well so that we can kind of have a, a focal point to, to look at. And I believe I'm aiming slightly to the left, so slightly towards the purple side of this wormhole. And I'm going to give myself some forward momentum. And if you notice, it doesn't look like I'm getting any closer to the edge of the wormhole it kind of oscillates up and down and the sun gets bigger and smaller and it looks like we're actually moving out to the left and now we're completely out of the wormhole i didn't do any changes with my mouse i didn't change the direction that i was looking and we ended up going out of the wormhole to bring back the sink analogy imagine that we are actually in that sink in that two-dimensional example we're in that sink and we can't look up we can't look to the other side of the pipe that we're in deep inside of the throat of the sink but we are perpendicular to the direction of the pipe so this is looking up the pipe this is looking down the pipe and this is looking perpendicular to the direction of the pipe if our aim is even slightly off to one side as we start to move we'll slowly spiral up the pipe again this is in two dimensions we'll slowly spiral up the pipe until we eventually get to the edge of the sink and we're out of the sink. What you're seeing here is the 3D equivalent of that. Interstellar did a fairly good job of explaining, well, what is a wormhole or what is a black hole? Um, in the wormhole example, how would you, in two dimensions, if you puncture a hole in a piece of paper, you get a circle and things can fall into that circle in three dimensions, puncturing a hole in a three-dimensional space or three-dimensional um, fabric, you get a sphere. The sphere is the hole. So I can go into the hole and move around it and not seem to get any closer to the tube because the tube that we see is our minds playing tricks on us. We are seeing distortion through a four-dimensional space-time compared to a three-dimensional view that we're used to. One of the other things that I've added is the ability to, and I've, I've shown it a couple of times, is the ability to change skyboxes. I've added quite a few different skyboxes, um, including x-ray light, uh, visible light, infrared light, uh, such as this one. And I've also added general colors. So I'm going to hop over to the other side of the wormhole quick. And this is just a really simple transition between all the different colors. But when you go to the other side of the wormhole, 
that simple color gradient starts to look incredibly complicated. You can see where it starts to smoothly loop around. And that was the goal that I, I had with this, is I wanted to show how things smoothly transition from one color to the next and how that cycle repeats. I've also added grid lines so that you can see just how distorted uh, space becomes. These are normal latitude and longitude grid lines that you would expect to see on a globe, but you're looking at it from the inside. I'm going to try to go back through the wormhole. And as you can see, in the very center where lines are almost straight, uh, light can pass straight through the th throat of the wormhole if it's going directly towards the center and it doesn't get distorted much. The parts where we see a lot of distortion are when the light paths slightly miss or get further away from the exact center of the wormhole. So I've included various uh, color variations of that with a lot of grid lines or a few grid lines. I've included a basic checkerboard pattern. Again, the distortion is strictly coming from the wormhole, uh, different color checkerboard patterns. So if you want to see what the combination of checkerboard patterns looks like, you can do this. Looks kind of like a, something out of Alice in Wonderland. And um, try this. Based on what I've been explaining, what do you think that other skybox is right now? Because it looks like rainbow colored blobs moving around each other. So can you guess what that other skybox looks like? I'll go into it in a second. So I'm going to start going closer, go through the wormhole. We're still passing through and we are now out of the wormhole. And if you guessed, the inside of a cube, you would be correct. There's still a little bit of distortion because we're still kind of close to the wormhole, but as we get further and further away, we're just inside of a cube. Normal things do not look lo normal when you're looking through a wormhole. I've also added a cube with grid lines. Let me go over to the other side to show what that looks like as it gets more and more distorted. And again, if, you're ever, if you ever lose control, hit space and you'll stop immediately. What is this? Actually, let's go to something more familiar. You should be able to recognize this. And this is, again, I, I had fun with just picking skyboxes that I was able to find that let you get a feel for just how distorted things get. This is a map of the Earth. I'm going to pass through and go into the planet. <laughs> so this is a uh, projection from the inside out. So this is what the globe would look like if you inverted it and then we're on the inside of it. And where did the wormhole go? There it is. So if you want to have some fun and experiment around with looking at what a wormhole looks like, increasing the throat size, uh, looking at the grid lines and just having fun and experimenting. Again, I highly, highly, highly recommend having a graphics card. Uh, right now I'm running this on a an RTX 3090 at 4K, 60 frames a second. It seems to be running fine for me at, I think, about 50% GPU utilization. So you will likely be able to do this on a 1080, uh, an R a GTX 1080. If you're doing it at 1080p, you may have some frame issues. You may also be able to do it. Go ahead and give it a shot. The link is free in the description. Give it a shot and let me know what you think of it.